If you wanna make real money with affiliate marketing as fast as possible, I'm gonna break it all down for you. So this business course covers everything you need to start a profitable affiliate marketing business. That's setting up your website, the tools you need to get started, all the ways to use AI, how to write monetizable articles, join the affiliate programs, and make real affiliate income in a sustainable, ongoing way. So affiliate marketing is my favorite form of monetization. It's how my blog, adaminfro.com, makes over $100,000 a month with that revenue stream. And I'm pumped to share this real business information with you. So let's get started. So this full course is how to create a real affiliate marketing business in 2023. Now, it's still the best way, in my opinion, to make passive income because we're promoting other people's products. We don't need a huge audience yet and we don't need our own product. And it's a great way to make passive income. You don't have to do a whole lot. It doesn't require a lot of money to get started. And building an affiliate marketing, marketing website is pretty easy these days. However, turning this into a real business can be more challenging. So that's what we're gonna break down for you. So first of all, why affiliate marketing? Where does it fit? Well, there's a lot of reasons to own your own website. This is the central repository of your personal brand. Every personal brand, every person out there should have their own website. And even if you're a YouTuber or on Instagram, a website is what is the central repository of the information about you. So why don't we start a website and make a lot of affiliate income doing the same thing? It's the starting point. It's the perfect revenue stream if you don't have an audience yet. It dictates your initial content strategy. So the right keywords equals money. So when we think about how do we make the most money from affiliate marketing, well, we need a website because of search intent and people buying things online via Google search. And we need to rank for the right keywords. So ranking for the right keywords requires that you create content around affiliate marketing keywords. And you need to know that stuff which dictates the initial content that you create also you can fail a lot i failed tons of times and the great thing about a website and affiliate marketing is you can fail and you don't affect customers you know it's not an e-commerce business where you ship products and it messes up and people get pissed at you you just create content when a blog is an infinitely updatable asset that can be updated an infinite number of times so you can fail a lot and you learn a lot you learn about seo on-page seo keyword research link building affiliate marketing monetization how the internet works you learn it all as you do it and there's really a lot of scams out there when you're learning this stuff. So I want you to take it from someone like me who's built a real affiliate business, who has a blog, adamandfro.com, who's ranked for over four years for content, who's made over $100,000 a month with affiliate marketing for over 12 months in a row. Not somebody saying with a nice thumbnail on YouTube saying, here's how you make $5,000 a month, but they don't really have good information here, which is why we're gonna take it as, you know, to the next level and give real strategic business advice here. And ultimately, affiliate marketing is the first revenue stream of many. Affiliate marketing starts, then you can do ad revenue, then you can eventually sell your own product, you can do consulting, you can do all kinds of different revenue streams, but we need to start somewhere and affiliate marketing is where we start. So let's talk about building your affiliate marketing website first. So if you don't have a website yet, this is where you need to get started. Now let's talk about choosing your domain name. And this is why I like personal brand websites. So. The domain name doesn't matter for ranking content on Google. It doesn't matter if you have a keyword rich domain name or anything like that. What matters is you have something you can fail a lot at and you won't quit. That's ultimately what matters. And I started mine at adamenfro.com, my own name. I was gonna use it as like a digital resume, maybe use it for my career, write a few affiliate articles. I didn't think I'd make that much money, but it ended up working because of new startup tactics I was using. And just the fact that I didn't quit and it was at my name. Now what you can do is, if you don't wanna put it at your full name, I would just say firstlastname.com. You can do that and rank for anything you choose to write about, change niches if it doesn't work, try and test new things out. You could also, like I could've went back and used something like adamsguide.com, adamsadvice.com, something broad enough where I wanna be known for one thing. So I wanna be in one niche, I wanna cover it, but it can be me, it's my name. That's why I was able to now be on YouTube because it's just tied to my name. I didn't create a niche site called the email marketing guy. I would've pigeonholed myself into that one category and then I would have been screwed for YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, and all of those things. But I think a personal brand is the perfect way to start. So first, you're gonna need to host your website, and this is basically where your website stores all its files, folders, images, and this is the main ongoing cost of running a website. So I really like WPX for WordPress. They have really fast hosting. And I also really like Nexus. So they offer affordable plans starting at just $19 a month. You get a lot of perks with that. So you get features like SSL uh, for security. So HTTPS, no overage fees, 24 seven support. So they've also created hosting for maximum speed. So they have a built-in CDN content delivery network, image compression, caching to make sure that everything loads fast. Cause site speed is a major ranking, uh, ranking factor when it comes to SEO. I'd like to think of Nexus 
this as the kind of hosting that people upgrade from shared hosting to Nexus. So maybe they start at like Bluehost or HostGator. They eventually move to something like Nexus. So if you're looking for a you know affordable WordPress hosting, make sure to click the link in the description below and sign up for Nexus web hosting. So every web host is a little bit different, but they're super easy to set up. Like you would go to either WPX or something like Nexus. You'd see their plans and you'd choose their plans and you can pay annually or monthly. You could choose something like the Spark plan. This is for WordPress. And then you just go to checkout. So you select the plan, you enter your information, first, last name, password, your billing address, payment info, you complete your purchase, and then it gets you into the dashboard. And these dashboards look a little bit different, but all that you have to do really is use WordPress with them. And WordPress is the best content management system and you install WordPress through your host and it's usually a one-click install. So you go from your host and you say enter WordPress and then you enter WordPress. So let's run through it. We go through that and then we get to what looks like a WordPress dashboard like this. WordPress is really simple to use. Um, you can, you know, it has endless customizations, plugins, themes, all of that. Everything's on the left-hand sidebar. There's different plugins, there's different pages and posts. So we'll go through kind of using WordPress really quickly in a fast way for your affiliate site. First, let's talk about your theme, which is under appearance themes. A theme is like, you can think of Wix or Weebly. It's like the design layout of your site. So we can choose a number of different themes that are in this WordPress repository, or we find one on our own. And I recommend Cadence. Cadence WP is a great theme because they have really perfect layouts for all kinds of blogs, content, affiliate sites. They also have Cadence Blocks, which allows you to create those affiliate blocks, like with the things that say like check price on Amazon, check price at Best Buy, all those content blocks, pros, cons, all of that kind of features. But you can see they have a number of different starter templates that you can use. So you can just check, check all of these and see which one that you like. And then we can see that when we have it, we can customize the theme inside of WordPress by clicking customize. And it gives you some, some different settings. So this is like a little sample site we created, the Cafe Man. And there's colors and fonts that you can change, so typography, all that kind of stuff, all the way down to header, footer, general post page layouts, some you know theme customization options where the menu is, home page settings, how does it display it, site identity, so you know add your logo, add your text, and all of that. And then it's just pretty easy to to edit these things, and they all lay out in a simple format and you know with cadence. If you're interested in learning like the exact click by click process, I don't want to cover it in this full this video exactly. It'll take like a 45 minutes to show you every little detail of this, but you can click the link in the description below, sign up for my free masterclass where we cover all of this stuff and more. Another nice thing with cadence is they have cadence blocks. So in the left hand sidebar, you can go to all your posts, view your blog posts, go into individual ones that we want to create. And we know that blog posts have a very similar format when it comes to affiliate content. So we'll cover the exact formula and show you some examples, but we can see that like Cadence Blocks, is it builds its own table of contents maker, but pulling headings in. If we hit enter and choose a new line, we can select browse what we want to add. And we can see Cadence Blocks here and we can add all kinds of different things, advanced buttons, countdowns, Google Maps, icons, advanced images. Affiliate posts are really simple to write, you know, and it's about using WordPress because it has the best functionality for creating these types of posts. What do we need? Well, we need headings to tell Google what this post is, H1, H2, content. And then what's nice is, again, we go back to we're assembling content. We're not just writing from a blank page. There's a specific way to write these kinds of affiliate articles that rank with headings. And then you can see that this is a nice cadence block with two columns, image on the left side, text on the right with a button, check price on Amazon with a nice border around it, top pick. But you can create these very simple uh, affiliate content blocks with cadence doesn't require any coding just adding a few little uh, templates in so next let's talk about the different plugins that you can use so plugins extend the functionality of wordpress there's plugins for everything like if you're running a barbershop you can get a calendar plugin or you know reservation plugin for a restaurant but really when it comes to blogging there's just some plugins that we need we need like speed plugins image optimization and affiliate marketing security and a few others but if you look at the um the plugins that we have installed, you can see that there's different ones. So there's Cadence Blocks, so we installed that, and Starter Templates. Rank Math is a good one for SEO that you can use, and that optimizes your blog post, meta description, uh, indexes your site in Google if you set it up correctly, do all that, that's really simple to use. Short Pixel is a good image optimization tool. That one allows you to, you know, every time you upload an image into your WordPress library, it condenses it down into a smaller JPEG file. Then there's Thirsty Affiliates, which is a really good one for uh, managing and organizing all of your affiliate links. So we'll cover joining affiliate programs, but you add them into this tool. As you can see in Thirsty Affiliates, you can view all your affiliate links. You click them here, you paste your affiliate link into the destination URL, you give it a name, you can organize it, categorize it and save link. And we always wanna make sure that links are no follow and open in a new tab. But you know, plugins are really useful. There's a ton of different plugins that you can have. If you wanna add new ones, um, there's also WordFence Security, which is free, which is a good one. You can go to add new, and then you can go through the plugin library and see what there is. So a lot of sites come preloaded with Jetpack, which is a little bit 
bloated and slows your site down, you can use Classic Editor. But you can look through. But these are the ones that I recommend. Or some of you know, just to get started, use some of these uh, on this list here. There's a few extra plugins I like too. There's one called Mammoth.docx Converter. It's another free tool. This allows you to upload Google Docs directly into WordPress. So if you have it formatted correctly in Google Docs, you can add it to WordPress. This is helpful if you have like a, somebody writing for you or a content writer or you're writing guest posts and it's really good. So you get comfortable with Google Docs and do that. WP Rocket's also a good one. This is a paid tool, but this is the best like speed optimization tool on WordPress. There's plenty of good tutorials online of like the exact settings for WP Rocket, but that's one I use and I recommend for speed. There's easy table of contents, which you can use this one if you don't have cadence or you want to use something different, but that's a table of content solution that kind of works and organizes your content. And that's really it. So really when we think about the minimum cost to get started, let's say we're using WPX, $25 a month. New domain name might be $13 a year. And you pay for WP Rocket, let's say at $59 a year, then short pixel. You, you pay based on the number of images you need to optimize. It's pretty cheap though. Like $10 might get you, get you thousands of images probably. But the total cost to get started of a website for affiliate marketing, is about $107 plus 20 to $25 a month. So when we talk about building your minimum viable website, that's what I call it, a minimum viable site, something that's good enough, but you haven't perfected it. We're not perfectionists here. We don't wanna spend a month creating a website. We can do this in a day or two. Here's the core four pages you need. You need a homepage, an about page, a blog archive page where your posts go, and then a blog template, so how your blogs are laid out. And this is all kind of set up for you. But when we think of a homepage, it's really just, here's like a backlinko example. Kind of looks similar to my homepage where it's like you have a main sentence, your value proposition at the top. And the thing that's good about a homepage when you're first starting your site, you can change it an infinite number of times. I've changed that sentence on my site probably a hundred times by now because my site's changed and evolved. And because it was at my name, I could change it and change different things. But really a homepage is just, if you look at it in two seconds, I need to understand what this is about. And this is an opportunity to put your face out there. I know it can be uncomfortable for some people. You don't have to, but you can. But a homepage should be lead collection. So, you know, building an email list potentially for the future. Even if you don't have a product yet, it's always good to have like at least capturing people's email. And then just a few things about you. It doesn't need to be long. Then an about page should be really a personal story. Not really about like your accomplishments and everything like a LinkedIn profile, how you're perfect, how you're good at this and good at that. And you went to this. It should be a really good story. If you check mine out at adaminfro.com, it's more like, from my birth, all the mistakes I made, a little bit about how I started the blog, but you should be very vulnerable and share yourself with the world on your about page. Then you have a blog archive, so that's kind of where your blog lives. So your site.com slash blog, and you can dictate that with your theme, just choosing how it laid out. So you might have a three column layout. It might be a one column layout. It doesn't really matter, honestly. These things are kind of going by the wayside. People are gonna find you by Googling something and visiting your article first. So it, as long as it looks good, you don't have to worry about that too much. And then a blog template. This will be set up for you in your theme, how everything's laid out, what your headings look like, is there a right-hand sidebar or not? You know, how all that works. So it's pretty simple. So with affiliate marketing, you need to think like a marketer, not a writer. This is not writing, this is monetizing content. So you have to be strategic with your approach. That's writing, keyword research, and the layout of your posts. So first let's talk about the type of content you have to create. There's really just two for affiliate marketing and a blog in general. There's in, how people use Google and how websites make money. There's informational content, so how to do stuff, pieces of information in your niche. And then there's transactional, so that's things like best credit cards, best camping gear, best modular sectionals, best living room sofas, best patio furniture, everything that has best signifies search intent, signifies buyer intent. And that's where list posts come in when you're recommending and comparing the best products. That is 99% of affiliate revenue is made through posts like that. So we can see that informational posts, they might have a lot of search volume. People search for things about how to do things a lot. That can make ad revenue, passive ad revenue, because if you're searching like how to start a business or how to tie your shoes, you're not ready to really buy an affiliate product yet, but it might be searched a lot. So you might as well put banner ads on those types of posts. And then affiliate revenue comes through transactional posts. So I'm gonna break this down for you. So first we have to be strategic with our keywords. That's things like search volume and competition. So I wanna give you some examples. We'll go through these in what I call the keyword monetization matrix. So there's four different types of keywords that your blog can have. And there's two main ones that you need to be focusing on. So on the left-hand side here, we have search volume, which is how many times it's searched a month. So the more it's searched, the more potential traffic you have. And then on the bottom, we have competition. So left to right, how competitive is it? How many authority sites are in there? How difficult is it to rank for? 
So first let's cover low volume info posts. So this is low, low search volume and low competition. These are not that valuable. However, these are what we call early wins. If you're just starting your affiliate marketing website and you have no traffic yet, you have no domain authority, these are some of the ones that can help you get out of that Google sandbox and start ranking for anything. You wanna start ranking for almost anything in your niche. So that's low volume informational posts, what I call early wins. So this example is like the home niche, home, living room, furniture, that kind of stuff. So one that's low volume informational is tiny house kitchen ideas. Pretty niche, pretty long tail. Not really gonna make money because it's an ideas post. People are just looking for inspiration. They're not gonna purchase something. However, it could be an early win for your website. You could start ranking for something like this a lot quicker because it's not competitive and it's not searched a ton, but you can actually rank for it. So that's kind of a good starting point for some of your articles. Next, I wanna cover high volume info posts. So we see that the, the search volume is high, the competition is generally low, and these are great. These are what I call brand builders. So you can get a lot of traffic with these. Low competition, high volume. There's not about a bunch of search intent to make transactional affiliate revenue, but these are informational keywords. So things like dorm room ideas. It's searched a lot, there's not a ton of competition for it, and it's a pretty high quality post because you can get a lot of traffic for it. These ones can make ad revenue. Now moving over to the other side, this is high search volume, high competition. Think of antiques. This is what I call antique keywords. So things that have been around for a long time that are probably impossible to rank for in the 2020s. Something like best vacuum cleaner, something that's been around for ages, best refrigerator, best VPNs, best web hosting. Good luck, you're probably not gonna rank for it on your affiliate website in the 2020s. Maybe if you wrote that post 15 years ago, but it's difficult. So these are high competition, high search volume keywords that are transactional. There might be a few in here that you can rank for if you look at the keyword research tools, but it'll be difficult. And then finally, we have lower competition transactional posts. So these are like medium competition potentially, medium search volume, but they're kind of living in this box here. These are emerging products. So this could be something like best modular sectional, not very competitive yet, not too competitive, not overly competitive, a newer product with decent search volume. And that is where affiliate marketing lives. So these are the two right here. You want high volume info posts, ideas posts, things in your niche that can make you affiliate, uh, ad revenue and get a lot of traffic to your website. And then affiliate revenue with these longer tail emerging products in your niche. These are the two best, plus you know, the keywords in your niche that can make you money that are new, and then also high volume brand builders. So these are the two right here. So let's break this down really quick in my favorite SEO tool, Ahrefs. So I'm gonna show some examples here of different keywords and we'll go through it. So again, keyword is at the heart of your affiliate marketing strategy. We don't like choose an affiliate program and then try to promote this brand and blast stuff on Facebook. It starts with search intent, which it starts with ranking for keywords online. And that become, it comes down to understanding this stuff at the, at the snap of a finger, knowing this is a good opportunity, this is not a good opportunity. So I'm gonna go through this keyword monetization matrix real quick and give you examples. So let's look at the bad examples. So best vacuum cleaners. The difficulty is hard. It's been around for a long time. High volume, traffic potential is, a, you could get 100,000 visitors a month just for this keyword, but it's pretty difficult. Let's look at who's ranking for this. Uh, we have New York Times, Good Housekeeping, The Spruce, Ratings, CNN, Tech Radar, Tom's Guide, Consumer Reports, and People.com. The chances of a new blog ranking for this are at probably zero at this point. So that's why it's a bad example. If you look at the top 10 ranking sites here on Ahrefs, too competitive. I mean, these, these websites are massive and authoritative, so it'd be difficult. So that's why this is tough. The volume's high, but it's just kind of too much. Different, a different example here is best modular sectional. We can see this was not searched at all in 2017, 2018, 2019 it searched. Now it's, you know, in the last three years, it has good search volume. The difficulty is a lot lower, meaning this is a number from zero to 100 based on how difficult it is to rank for this. That's easier. The traffic potential is 27K, which is actually really high, but the volume is a bit lower than best vacuum cleaners. But if we look at the examples here, we can see there are signs that we can rank. And what we're looking for here is low authority sites on the first page ranking on Google. That's a sign that you can too. So we see, yes, there is the spruce.com. Yes, there is Forbes. However, when we look at domain rating, which is a number from zero to 100 based on the authority of the site, we can see there are low sites here on the first page. So there's bethrmartin.com. There is decorhint.com, inspireddesigntalk.com as well. So these are three sites with domain ratings under 40. One's a 22, not many backlinks to it, pretty new site, and it's ranking on page one. 
getting a good amount of traffic for that keyword. So that's a good sign. A newer and emerging product is easier to rank for. A little bit longer tail, less competition, and you see low, con low authority sites on the first page. The other example here was tiny house kitchen ideas. So low volume, low difficulty. Again, we see a few low authority sites here on the first page. LillianCabinets.com is ranking for that. So this is, you know, you just look for these opportunities. We'll cover that. And then dorm room ideas. So something that is pretty good search volume, 11,000. Anything over 10, I consider pretty high. And like, that's worth writing for an ideas type of article. And we can see here, like by Sophia Lee, who has a teaches blogging. Uh, she has dorm room ideas ranking here. So makes sense and she's a 56, not that high. So you'll find examples. So every niche is a little bit different. If I just put in ideas, so let's talk about informational posts first. I can put in ideas and I can look at matching terms here and I can see, well, here's all the ideas in the world. Dinner ideas, painting ideas, Halloween ideas. What if I made the max keyword difficulty 10 and I made it really low competition ideas post? What would I find? Well, I can see there's things like graduation cap ideas, birthday, a lot of birthday party things that aren't uh, competitive at all. I see that with like, there's actually a lot of that. So if you wanted to write about birthday party parties and celebration ideas, you could probably get a ton of traffic to a site around that, but you do that. And then maybe you put in your niche plus ideas. So I would put in like kitsch, um, living room ideas. And then I could look at different things in there and I could see, okay, a lot of this is com competitive, like living room ideas is, but not living room curtain ideas, farmhouse living room ideas, apartment living room ideas. These are all things we could rank for. And what's interesting is informationally, there's you know different types of seed keywords that you can use in the niche. So if you're home blog, it's probably ideas, living room, kitchen ideas, patio ideas. But if you're in fitness and you're in the fitness niche and you wanna create a fitness affiliate website, we're creating these posts to get a lot of traffic. They're not gonna make that affiliate revenue, but they're gonna build the business as a whole. So for that, it would be like exercises if you're in fitness. You could find matching terms there. You see, okay, a lot of exercises are somewhat competitive, but what if we put the keyword difficulty down to max 20? And then we look at the results for that and we can see that, okay, maybe I could rank for tricep dumbbell exercises. That has good search volume. Trigger finger exercises, that's interesting. Push exercises, jawline exercises, pull. For, so you find them by filtering that out, or it could be workouts. You put that keyword difficulty max to 20, show results, and you can see what all these workouts I could write, thigh workouts, upper ab workouts, a lot of things, low competition. You just gotta look for it and find it. Uh, one, another interesting one in information is like how to, so I could search for how to do stuff. Um, for me, like there's everything, how to screenshot on a Mac is one of the most popular ones, how to lose weight, all of that. What if I put in like how to start? Start a business, very competitive. But you can start to find these ideas. Start a YouTube channel's last. How to start a conversation with a girl. Start your own business, drop shipping. So you, how to's are also interesting. Another one that you would look at if you're a food blog, informationally, would be recipes. That's why they make so much ad revenue with those is because they're writing all kinds of different recipes. And I'll put like max 30, see what comes up in different recipes. Endless amount. So you could do like chuck roast recipes, 60,000 searches a month, cube steak recipes, shredded chicken recipes, kielbasa, flank steak. If you had a recipe, food blog, you know, you, for food, you'd probably like affiliate opportunities would be like gadgets in the kitchen, expensive items in the home, things that can help you, the products to cook. But then mainly it's recipes. That's the informational intent of that niche. So you could rank for a lot of recipes that way. So that's a little bit about informational content. Now let's talk about transactional affiliate articles. So the example I had here before was best modular sectionals, but how do we find these opportunities for affiliate revenue? Well, we put in best plus our niche. So I could try best kitchen, and then I could look at different matching terms that include the term best kitchen with other things. I could then filter this down. I can see if I make the keyword max keyword difficulty something like 25, and I just do the results there, I'll be able to see different opportunities. So things like kitchen towels, see how kitchen nightmares episodes is in here and the difficulty is so low because things that are not very monetizable are gonna be lower. So things that can make more money are gonna have more competition, more people writing the articles around it. You have to find your sweet spot in the middle where you can still rank for these things that are newer things. So um, there's kitchen rugs, kitchen torch, kitchen gifts, kitchen shoes, kitchen mats, lots of things. What about like uh, faucet? Best kitchen faucet, best touchless kitchen faucet is a great one right there. Pretty expensive probably, it's the one that you touch. Thousand search volume, low difficulty. And you can do this in any niche, like fishing. 
you search for best fishing and then you just look and see the difficulty and what you can rank for. So you can see things like best braided fishing line, best sunglasses for fishing, fishing line, best bass fishing line, reels, boats, lures. You find all these opportunities and it's just giving you what to write, what articles to create for your blog, golf, clubs, bags, grips, drivers, irons. You could just keep going on and on. Kayaking, best kayaking, best, you know, inflatable kayak, fishing kayak, amazing, hot tub. I mean, any, anything that you think about on Amazon, you can create, you just have to stay in one niche, but you create this content. Best, you know, hot tub for money, best hot tub covers, plug and play hot tub. The list is really endless, but you find them with best. And then we start stack ranking these keywords based on what will make us the most affiliate revenue. So that includes what is the search volume? What is the competition? How, do you, how well do you think you can rank? And then what is the affiliate, what I call the affiliate revenue potential? This is something that takes a little bit of brain power that's not in one of these tools. How much affiliate money can you make? And typically that's how expensive is the product that you're promoting? And then what is the commission rate of that company? So if I'm uh, talking about a $5,000 hot tub and I have a 10% commission from that hot tub company, well then that's $500 every single time someone is buying something from me. So we don't wanna be going after you know promoting things that are cheap, a pair of socks, uh, paper clips, best paper clips of 2023. That doesn't sound all that exciting, but if you have something that is worth more money, you just have to live in the zone of understanding this stuff because everything that's been around forever and can make people money is very competitive, but there's new products emerging all the time. So that's the key in the heart and soul of your affiliate marketing business is finding keywords, being on the cutting edge and finding this stuff. So for example, I did this with my own. I did best software. I put that in and then I looked at, you know, what was emerging, what was new. Um, a lot of it was very competitive, but I, I got in early. So timing is a crucial component of this too. One I did was like best uh, podcast hosting. So I rank for that now somewhere and it's like the difficulty is now 56 uh it's pretty tough to rank for but if you look at it i'm on page one for that you know and i make nine thousand plus dollars a month from that usually nine to thirteen thousand dollars a month because i've been recurring and making income so it's finding and spotting trends sometimes even the keywords aren't even in hrefs or a tool like this you'd have to go to google trends to spot something and this is where your personal brand niche selection knowing what you're talking about really helps because you might know a certain area and have expertise and find affiliate marketing opportunities before anyone else and that's the key too like knowing about what you're talking about can actually help you rank for stuff because you know about it and write about it way earlier than other people do so we can stack rank these keywords just add them into a spreadsheet put some information on them and just keep them in one place so you have them you know ready to use so we have keywords but now what do we do well successful articles that make money they're assembled not written they're not written generally and creatively and now they're all different they're all pretty much the same and this is what i call the content assembly line method so here's the truth not every single article you write is going to rank maybe 20% of them will rank. So 80% of your time is gonna be spent on articles that don't rank. So how do we maximize our efficiency to create as much content as we can? High quality content, not poor quality content, but good content where we're actually moving on, creating more articles and not being perfectionists. I remember when I started my blog, I spent two weeks on an article because I thought it was amazing. It was about human nature and human potential and why we don't live up to our potential. And it was a good article, but I've since deleted it from my site because it didn't get any traffic, no one gave a shit, it wasn't optimized for keywords. So the content assembly line method is thinking like Henry Ford. Your blog is like Henry Ford or like McDonald's. You need to master the process of content creation yourself, have a system and a process for it, and you can do that before you outsource it to another writer. This is why an affiliate marketing business is great because it's the one type of business that doesn't require your direct input. I created YouTube videos because I wanna expand my business and personal brand outside of blogging. But you don't have to do that. You can if you want to go to like seven, eight figures. But if you want to stay at six figures, you just create a blog. But we need to rep create a replicable process for content creation because we're busy. We might have kids. We have responsibilities. We have a we all all of us. Most of us probably start a blog with a full time job like I did. So how do we do this? Well, first is we create a minimum viable post, an MVP, something that's good enough. Move on. So if I'm creating the best modular sectionals article, I'm not going to create the 25 best and look up every like write the perfect review i'll start with five or i'll start with seven and then i'll create a good enough article that's long enough based on the competition that's optimized for on-page seo that can rank but i'm not going to be per perfect i'm not going to make it ten thousand words long we can also use ai and seo tools so things like surfer seo which is definitely recommended the first one i actually really rec recommend that you buy at an ongoing basis I'll, I'll cover that but things that 
tell you exactly how to do this on page SEO. Then we have the same format of these articles. Then we publish it, we let Google index it, and then we can always go back and update blog posts. So blog posts should be updated every like three to six months or so, and that depends on the niche, if it's really evergreen or not. And we, we add, eventually we add unique content to it. Things like those content blocks I showed you, your own unique take, maybe infographic, a video, something that you know can be added over the course of a year or two later on, but we have to make it eventually unique. Rewrite the intro, make it better for human beings. So we start with a minimum viable post optimized for SEO, and then we have, over time we update this, and that is the key to ranking this content. So first we have to talk about the article structure and on-page SEO. So there's a lot of different factors here. There's the URL, there's your headline, there's intros, there's blocks, there's content. So how do we lay it all out? Well, first we talk about the URL. The URL of your blog post is really the only thing that you can't change. So we put that target keyword into the URL and no other thing. So you don't add like the full title into that URL. You don't add the year because the year will change and then you have to change your URL. The URL is the only thing you can't change because what if like you change it, but you have links pointing to it. Now those are 404 broken links or you get backlinks from other sites to you. So that needs to stay the same. Everything else, the title, the content, everything inside of it can change. Really there's different things for on-page SEO. There's title, there's your blog title, headings, content, meta descriptions. And then you can use different tools. You can use like rank math to cover some of these bases. You can use Moz to check your title tag to make sure it's not truncated and it's the right length and it looks good, but you can do that. You also wanna probably have a table of contents because easy navigation, people clicking around, being able to access stuff, easy to navigate. Blog posts are good for SEO because it keeps people engaged, keeps them longer dwell time, maybe a lower bounce rate and things like that. And then we talk about affiliate content blocks. So these should eventually be added to all your posts. They don't need to be added right away. And these bring eyeballs to your links. You get more clicks on your affiliate links. You can make more money. And these can be created with Cadence or a tool like Spectre as well. But there's a basic structure that we'll cover. So we'll run through a few examples here of exactly how posts should be laid out. But there's an H1 heading, intro, H2s, H3s, and it's a templatized content assembly line method. So first I'm gonna show my own site. This is my article on the best webinar software of April, 2023. I change that every month. And then what we have here is an introduction and this includes the target keyword webinar software or best webinar software right here as well. And that's in the, tar the, the title. So the title should be number plus plus your target keyword, plus what I call search intent trigger words. This is kind of like clickbait, but being more helpful. So you wanna add some stuff to get people to click because higher click-through rates on the Google search results can also help you. Odd numbers typically work better than even numbers as well for some reason. Now I have a five column across uh, block section. You can do this or not. I didn't have this for the first like year, year and a half of this article, so it's not a big deal. You can do a top three even. These are uh, affiliate links here going to the site. But we, here what we have, we have an introduction, very simple. You wanna give uh, some information, basically with an affiliate list post for on-page SEO like this. The goal is to cover your bases so that when someone reads this, they feel like they got all the bases covered and they understand everything. But the big thing here is, this is the format. This is your first H2 heading. So H2 is the second most important type of heading next to your H1. So H2 includes what is the, plus your target keyword, what is the best webinar software? And we write this because this is how Google likes to read stuff. If everything was just paragraph text down the page, Google wouldn't understand what's most important or how to organize stuff or pull it into a featured snippet or where to rank it or any of that stuff. So this is uh, the best format for it is H2. And then we have the answers to this question. So the answers are H3s, which is the title of the company. This is an H3 heading. So this is number one, which is Livestorm. I add a sentence here that is, you know, is kind of gives it what it's best for as a high level overview of someone skimming. Because people honestly skim these articles. They don't read every single word, especially when it comes to this. They want to just click through on the affiliate links, learn a little bit about it. But I give my take. You know, this is also a new section that we created. This is an affiliate link. And then we have you know, the content of the actual review. So we have a little bit of paragraph content. You'll see that the affiliate link was added here. We have images and then we have features. We have user experience, we have pricing. So we go over the pricing, what it costs, what I like and dislike, product, recent product updates, a call to action sentence, you know, you can get started for free and upgrade to a premium plan, and then a button. So these are all easy to create in cadence blocks. But once we're done with that and we have this information, um, it's the exact same thing for number two, three, four, five, and six. So this is these are actually longer, and I started with probably half this length of content for each company. But over time, over the years, we update it and add more content and make it a little bit better. Now here's the question. 
do you have to use every single product in your affiliate list post? The answer is no, but this is again going back to where personal branding and niche selection come in. I was in the software world for a little while. I used a lot of these tools. I was a, um, I worked in the tech world in Austin, so I had a lot of experience here. And with software, you can even do free trial the software and like look at stuff and test it out a little bit. Ultimately, we want to create the most helpful content possible. So Google created what's called the helpful content update in 2022, and really it's like anything that's not adding to the conversation or making things more, you know, valuable is not going to be ranked as well. So you can't just like pull features from livestorm.com, pull the exact same thing. That used to work. You could just pull features from the website, some competitor sites, put it in here, rewrite it, make it your own a little bit, maybe test it a little bit. But that's just not working as well anymore. So you really have to you know, this is where your niche expertise comes in. Now, I'm not saying if you're a photography blogger, or you want to make money via affiliate marketing for like camcorders that you have to go buy 17 $5,000 cameras. That's not realistic. And when you look at the internet and see who's ranking for this stuff, like Tom's Guide, CNET, they're not, they're, they have thousands and thousands of products on their website. They're literally not testing every single one. That's the unfortunate truth of the internet, which is, you know, reviews are based on ranking, SEO, if you're really good at SEO and strategy, not necessarily always what's the best, but it's a templatized way to do it. Let's look at another example. Best rock climbing shoes of 2023. This is Switchback Travel, which is a uh, outdoor site. They talk about all kinds of stuff, but we see introduction, some of their top picks at the top. So that's easy to click through the affiliate links. And then the best overall, you know, number one down the line, number two. And again, again it has the sentence about what it's best for. I like this layout better than mine. They probably have more money than me and they, you know, they spend a lot more on content, but you know, you, you, you make do with what you can. And these are affiliate links. So anytime someone clicks through and purchases this shoe, $219 shoe, they get a commission from back country. So similar layout. Uh, there's another one here from Gizmodo, the best vegan protein powders, introduction, top picks, and then all of this information. Now you'll see sometimes like with very specific stuff like television, supplements, things that have a lot of facts. They have a lot of different layouts here with um, columns and rows. And so you can get creative with it. Again, when you're first starting, you don't need any of this fancy stuff. You can just literally have H2, what is the best? H3 numbered list of the companies or products and then paragraph text. Just make sure you're covering what kind of features, what kind of things should be covered in that product review. Here's another one. The 25 best luxury watches for men show up in style in 2023. I'm not super fancy, so I don't really care about what I look like that much. Um, so we see there's also ads in this post. So affiliate marketing is great because you can also have ads on your affiliate articles if you want. Sometimes it makes sense, sometimes it doesn't. If it's a really profitable affiliate article, probably, and it doesn't get a ton of traffic, but it makes a ton of affiliate revenue, probably doesn't make sense to have ads because you're, if you're making a few grand and then you make 20 more in ads, it just distracts people. But you can have both. And this is, again, the top overall picks going to very much luxury watches. The number one, which price is only available upon request, which means we know it's very very expensive probably. And also just a quick note on these how-to or informational posts. They're pretty much formatted and written the exact same way. So like, here's my post on how to start a blog. And as you see, the internet is lists. People love lists. People understand information in a list format. So even the info content, the recipes, the exercises, the how to do things, those informational posts that can make you add revenue and link to your affiliate posts, they're pretty much formatted the same way too. Introduction, and then a number of different steps. Now, when you're writing a how-to guide, you can actually add affiliate links in a slightly different way. So I would add them as part of the process of doing the thing that you're doing. So any website that is making affiliate revenue has these two types of posts, informational and transactional. So how to do stuff and then the products you need to do those things. So when we're talking about how-to, you would add it like this, a little bit more naturally in the content. Here's the steps to set up your blog. This is exactly how you do it with Bluehost. So sign up here, click that link. So you write it, but also as we see here, a how-to guide is also a numbered list of different steps in a process. So again, it's just what are the steps? What's the most helpful? How do we have table of contents in that? So it's a similar process to write these kinds of articles as well. So let's talk about speeding up the content creation process with AI. So there's a lot of new AI tools on the market that can help us. We don't have to write as much anymore. It's great. So. Here's what I recommend. Some of the tools I recommend, I'm gonna go through them one by one. So ChatGPT, 
obviously everyone knows that one. This is not great for like writing full articles, but it's best for ideation. So coming up with ideas and that's things like keyword ideas. You can do topical authority mapping. So give me article ideas based around this keyword that'll cover my topical map and make me look like an SEO expert. It can come up with titles, outlines, and then really short articles, simple ones that you can edit. But it's great for ideation coming up with ideas. Another one is Jasper. So this is in-depth content creation. So this is you know, built on top of AI tools to help you with your content creation. This is best for manual AI content. So yes, it has ways to write content itself, but you have to do a little bit more work on your end to give it the right inputs, make sure that it's formatted correctly, give it the right recipe and work on it that way. And then probably edit it a good amount so it's not, uh, you know, looks like AI content. Another one is content at scale. So this is the best for rapid content creation. So this is the best one where basically all you do is you put in, here's my keyword. This is how long I want the article to be. A few check boxes here and there, you hit enter, and then it will, in about five minutes or so, finish the article for you and it's pretty much done. And then you put it through an SEO tool like Surfer SEO. So this is the must have one, the first real software cost that I recommend after web hosting. So for a real affiliate marketing business, if you have no money to start a business, then you shouldn't start this affiliate marketing business because it doesn't take much. We're not starting a brick and mortar business. We don't have inventory and overhead and rent and employees like most traditional businesses do. We can start a business online this affiliate business that makes 90% profit margins for $20 a month or whatever it is. But we have to, you know, people ask me a lot, how much does HREPs cost? Well, it's hundred to $200 a month, which isn't low. You can get the $99 a month plan. Um, you can share it with somebody. We have people in our blog growth engine community that share accounts sometimes or they help each other out, or you can sign up for a month and then cancel, do all your keyword research and cancel. Uh, Surfer is the first one at $49 a month that I recommend because it gives you exactly what to do for on-page SEO. So for example, I had an article here about GoDaddy alternatives. It gives you a content score. It gives you how many words you need in the article, how many headings, how many paragraphs, how many images, and then it gives you all the semantic keywords you need. And this is really important. So. Human beings, we can't come up with every single variation of the word that Google's natural language processing and machine learning expects to see in this affiliate article, but Surfer SEO will tell us that. So it says, you should put the word website builder in here eight to 13 times. You should put in random stuff here, free SSL certificate this many times. So you or a writer or somebody should go through this and get this Surfer score up, and then this gives it a better chance of ranking. And the truth is, a lot of people are using these tools. So if you're not, and you're just thinking that you're gonna write the next thing, well, Google's scanning all the articles, and the ones that have all this stuff, all these words in, it makes it seem more robust, a better article, so they're gonna outrank you. So Surfer is one that gives you the semantic keywords, and it's the best for on-page SEO. So you can definitely check that out. Um, so that's the one I fully recommend. It's really the, one of the first ones you definitely need. Content at scale is a really good one too. If you have the money to, and you don't wanna write everything yourself, click the link in the description below for that one if you're interested. Now, once you have content, we have a keyword plan, we have our content assembly method mapped out. We have a few articles on our blog. Maybe you're ranking. It's time to join affiliate programs. So I don't recommend you join affiliate programs before you have any traffic to your site with zero traffic. It's just kind of a waste of time. You're not gonna make money anyways. You might as well wait till you're getting some traffic in. But there's some popular affiliate networks you can join like ShareASale, Amazon Associates, this list here. Partner Stack, if you're promoting software. Impact's one of my favorite ones. They have a ton of companies in there. But you can sign up for a network where there's a bunch of individual affiliate programs and companies inside, and then you can join those inside of the network. There's also individual affiliate programs. So you could also find them by like Googling the product plus review or best, find brands that it's linking to. You could also just Google like, uh, you know, if you're in our uh, outdoor niche, you could Google like REI affiliate program, Dick's Sporting Goods affiliate program, all of that. The lowest competition niches out there are physical products. So things like Amazon Associates, you can join at first, but they have low commission rates, low cookie duration. So you'd eventually want to replace those Amazon links with actual company affiliate links. So let's say you're writing about the best basketball hoops of 2023. You could just send all of it to Amazon at first. And then you eventually, once you start getting a little bit of traffic, you could join like the Dick's Sporting Goods affiliate program. Then in cadence blocks, you could add both links, check price on Amazon, check price on dicksportinggoods.com or anything else. But the key is we wanna diversify and join a lot of different programs. And they're pretty easy to find. Again, you can Google the, the company plus affiliate program. They even sometimes have it in the footer of their website. And it's just a simple sign up form basically. So you sign up, you put in your website. And people say, do you need a website? If you're not willing to make a website, then you shouldn't start an affiliate marketing business, period. 
So there's a learning curve on this a little bit, but we have to do things that are a little bit difficult if we want to actually make real money. We can't just say, do I need a website to do this? Can I just grab the link and put it like, okay, maybe if you have a large social following, you can do that. Or a YouTube channel. YouTube is also good for affiliate marketing. But typically for these networks, if you're signing up, you put in your website, your email address, which should be a domain name email address, like uh, mine's like adamandfro.com instead of a Gmail. It just looks more professional. That's pretty much all you need. You also need a PayPal account to get paid. So if you're outside and you can't get a PayPal account, it's kind of tough. You might be able to find ways so that they can pay your bank directly. But PayPal is uh, one of the most common ways to do it. Like PartnerStack uses Stripe as well. So every network, every company is a little bit different. Now let's talk about adding affiliate links to your site. So there's different types of affiliate links. There's like banner ad affiliate links that you can grab or text affiliate links. So text affiliate links are the ones that you saw on my site that are just in the text highlighted or in buttons. Those are the ones that make all the money. If the search intent is there and somebody's searching for something they wanna buy, best webinar software, they land on that article, they see the number one recommendation, they're just clicking those text links through. So those are the ones that actually convert. Now, adding your affiliate links into WordPress includes how I showed you earlier, adding, pasting it into, getting that link from the affiliate platform once you're approved, copying and pasting that into Thirsty Affiliates, giving it a title, and that's pretty much it. And then anytime you add it in, you go to your post, you click, instead of inserting a link, there's gonna be a little button that pops up next to it that says TA, Thirsty Affiliates, you search for it in there, and that adds the text link in, very simple. And then if the link changes ever, or there's a new promotion or something, you can just change the link once in Thirsty Affiliates, and all of them will update. So I covered, you know, how do you optimize an article with affiliate links? Well, in transactional posts, let's look at my posts on online course platforms real quick. So as you see, this is another one. It's formatted just like webinar software. There's the introduction, I have a video. But then when we think about where do we add affiliate links? Well, we don't wanna overdo it, but we don't wanna underdo it. So what I do is I add it to the first mention. This is an affiliate link. I add it here. These two are affiliate links. I add it in the very first paragraph mention of the brand. That's a good one. And then pretty much you just, you don't have to mention it much anymore. You just go all the way down to where the button is. And then what I would do is I would add one more in a call to action sentence. I could have added it, you know, here or get started today. I could have added it there, but I just have it here and here as a button. So you wanna add it like three to five times in each company's little section and be done with it. We don't wanna overdo it. They're pretty much gonna click the button, something close to the button or something near the top. And then back to uh, informational posts, how to start a blog, I already showed you that. That's like in the steps of the process. This is what you have to do. Go here, do this thing, sign up for this. So there's another question, how do you order these companies in your posts? Well, if you're starting a new affiliate article, you wanna look at the competition, what's already ranking out there. Um, because if somebody's been ranking for a highly competitive or profitable keyword, or even just a new and emerging keyword, they probably have some data and they're ordering things in the right order. So you look at the price, you look at the commission rates, and the hidden one is the conversion rates. So as a blogger, as an affiliate marketing business owner, we have control over you know, our ranking, how many clicks we're getting in our affiliate links. But once we send the affiliate link click to the company, it is 100% on them to convert that user, that visitor into a customer. And sometimes there's brands that have horrible conversion rates, even though you think they're gonna be good. So for example, if you are recommending golf drivers, you don't wanna put like a $5,000 set, number one. You typically wanna put the medium, like best well-known popular mid-tier company number one, because that's the one most people are gonna buy. So even though it's like, oh, the price and the commission rate look great, it's $5,000, 8% commission. I'd make way more than if it was $1,000 but the hidden factor is that conversion rate of the actual brand. So like, sometimes it could be zero. I've seen where like the price or the commission rate I was receiving was three times higher. So I'm like, oh, I'm gonna make more money. But then I made nothing because the brand couldn't convert. So you have to think about how well known and popular the brand is and that's the ordering. And luckily, you know, if you know your niche well, it's easier. And typically the most popular and best companies, the ones that actually have the best affiliate programs are usually the best companies anyway, so it actually works out for everybody. All right, finally, let's talk about running a real affiliate marketing business and some strategies here. First, we have to say, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Don't join one affiliate program, rely on one article. This is a, you need a machine behind this, a content assembly line, a way to add and join affiliate programs and something that's you know consistently being, gasoline is being poured in and it's keep being done. So is it completely 100% passive? No, there's no such thing as passive income. You have to put the work in up front. You have to water the plants if you wanna keep them alive. But you could have somebody else watering the plants eventually, which is the nice part. I 
barely spend any time on my blog now, but it makes typically $150,000 a month. So we don't want to put it all in one basket. We need to diversify our business. So that means joining a lot of affiliate programs, not just having one article rank, but eventually having five to 10 articles ranking, making consistent revenue. And there's a lot of disciplines when it comes to running an affiliate marketing business. There's writing the content, there's joining the programs and networks, there's adding affiliate links in, tracking the performance, actually getting paid. So usually it's just as easy as PayPal and they do it automatically, but sometimes brands can be a pain in the ass and they're like, send me an invoice for the exact amount or fill out this tax form or do this or that. So we really need an affiliate marketing machine behind all of this. So similar to the content assembly line, we need a process to do all this, to join programs, to add links, to track data, to get paid. This is an ongoing process that never stops. When you're first starting your blog and you're getting momentum and you're ranking for stuff, you're probably joining a lot of programs, adding a lot of links in and doing all of that. Then you kind of get to a steady state. Like now I don't join a ton of new programs. You know, we do write new and emerging transactional articles, but we're not like, it's not in that phase anymore. It's kind of the steady state phase. But here's what I would do to start adding affiliate links in and getting this machine and business running. So you create your website, you do your keyword research like I taught, you create a content process to create monetizable articles, and then you maybe you update the articles, and then what you do is you track landing page sessions in Google Analytics. So you wanna see, all right, is this, is this actual article getting any traffic? Once it's getting a little bit of traffic, then it's time to look at joining and adding these affiliate links in. So you can join the programs, you add in your links. So usually you just start with the base link directly to the product, no affiliate link, just link to it. Then you swap that out with an affiliate link. Then you wanna track your data. So look at the affiliate dashboards, whether it's a network or a program. And then you wanna make adjustments based on one to three months of data. So is that company making money in the number one spot? Is the number two company making more than that? Should they be put higher? Do you wanna talk to the affiliate manager? Can you get a higher commission rate? Can you negotiate? Make sure you get paid and rinse and repeat. So really it's a process of getting the articles to rank. Once they're on page one, then the money starts flowing in. The hard part is not adding affiliate links. The hard part is not joining affiliate programs. The hard part is actually building a real affiliate marketing business. So affiliate marketing really relies on consistency and diversification. A lot of people that teach it on YouTube are like, use ClickBank and it shows you in 15 minutes, here's how to make a hundred bucks because people click on those things. The algorithm rewards lazy content about making money fast and overnight. And unfortunately that never works in business or in life. So we have to realize that building this personal brand, building something for ourselves, you can live a dream life and you can make a lot of money, but just extend that time horizon out from three months or 90 days, or, you know, I want to make money this week to, I can make money, a little bit of money in three to six months, but I also know that I want to build something in the background of my life that doesn't consume my life that I enjoy doing that can make me money for years to come. So the thing is you can set up an affiliate site in a day, but it's the real business strategy that actually makes you money. So if you're interested in learning the real business strategy, exactly how I make that $150,000 a month, $400,000 a month with my entire, you know, two online businesses, we cover link building, affiliate marketing, content, all of that stuff in depth, what it takes to run a profitable content business in the 2020s. Make sure to click the link in the description below and sign up for my free 80 minute masterclass. It's updated and brand new. Uh, it's free. Just put your email in and you get it. No questions asked or anything like that. So if you like this video, please let me know if you have any questions on affiliate marketing. It's kind of nuanced. It's very different, personalized by the niche, by the individual person. So please like the video. That really helps a lot. Check out other videos on my channel. Subscribe. I would really appreciate that too. And I'll see you in the next video.